The story of this kill chain video is that an administrator has a networking issue and they have found a solution for their issue in a reply to a technical forum post. The forum post tells the administrator to download Putty, which is a commonly used free SSH client. The forum post is helpful enough to give out a download link, which unfortunately points to a malicious server and to a backdoor version of Putty. Let us observe the different layers of security that the administrator faces when trying to ensure that the solution provided in the forum post works. The first layer of security that prevents our administrator from downloading the malicious executable is URL categorization. The server where the file is hosted at has been categorized as bot networks. Our administrator wishes to download the file, so they disable the access rule, which blocked the traffic. After the policy is refreshed, our administrator attempts to download the file again. The second traffic termination is done by deep packet inspection. As the downloaded file goes to inspection, the Shika Takanai encoder is identified from the file, triggering the related inspection situation. The Shika Takanai encoder is known to be a difficult encoder to detect, so this is a good demonstration of the power of the DFA-based inspection method in the force point next generation firewall. Our administrator truly wishes to download the file, so they permit the situation in the inspection policy. The policy is refreshed and our administrator tries to download the file again. The third termination is done by file filtering, more specifically the cloud sandbox. The file is uploaded to the sandbox, which reports that the file has malicious patterns, such as shell code usage and Trojan code. Our administrator is determined to get the file, so they modify their policy so that downloaded executables are no longer uploaded to the sandbox. The policy is again refreshed and our administrator progresses with the attempt to follow the suggested solution in the forum post. This time our administrator is able to download and execute the file. As we know, the file is backdoored. So when the administrator runs the file, it tries to open up a connection back to the attacker's server. Opening the backdoor fails as the policy enforces ECA allow listing. This means that only known trusted endpoint applications are permitted to make connections outside. We can see that the executable looks like putty based on the metadata, but the application is not signed by a trusted authority. Our administrator wants to make sure the executable works as it should, so they modify the policy to permit the connection. As our administrator executes the file again, the connection is permitted through and the backdoor is opened. The fifth termination is done by the Snort integration. The backdoor traffic triggers a custom Snort signature, which notices that the attacker tries to deploy a remote shell on the administrator's machine via the backdoor. Our administrator is still worried the executable won't work properly, so they disable traffic termination based on Snort signatures. Now our administrator has made sure that the executable can do what it wants. The administrator now has a backdoor putty on their machine, and each time they open up the file, the attacker receives a remote shell on the administrator's machine. The administrator also has a document which contains company secrets, and the attacker wishes to get hold of this document. The attacker uses PowerShell to upload the document to their server. The exfiltration attempt is blocked by the DLP integration. All uploaded documents are sent to the local DLP, 
which identifies that the file has confidential information and thus prevents the upload. We can see in the Forcepoint Security Manager that there is a new incident. The document matched on a regular expression rule, which looks for the use of confidential strings in files.